joined by Southeastern Louisiana head football coach, Frank Selfo. Coach, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Good to see you again. It seems like it's been forever since we've actually played a collegiate football game at the FCS level. What are you and your team most excited about finally taking the field again? Well, yeah, you know, you uh, as a as a, a player, you uh, practice to play. You don't practice to practice. And for us to have the opportunity to get back out on the field and compete against somebody else. And, you know, we, we always talk about how long camps are sometimes and you practice against each other and you continually practice against each other and you you know, you have to figure out a way to stay motivated at times. But we've been doing this for over a year now. And uh, it's been uh, since 2019 in the playoffs uh, up at Montana was the last time we took the field against an opponent. So we, we're definitely looking forward to playing somebody else. You talk about it being over a year since you've played an actual game. You've been practicing, whether it's with pads, without pads, you know, run throughs. How has your practice and your preparation changed just with this longevity that we've had? You know, I think we what we've done is we've been able to take advantage of uh, preaching and teaching more fundamentals. I think our players have gotten smarter uh, from a fundamental standpoint, obviously, but also just uh, the knowledge of the game. I, I, our staff has really done a good job incorporating those aspects, and sometimes we get caught up during the course of a year where we don't have we don't have the opportunity to spend as much time. The uh, the fall really gave us a chance to have back to back spring practices uh, per se. And it gave us an opportunity to do some more things with our players from an individual standpoint. You mentioned when we talked in July, when we thought the season was going to be in the fall, that you didn't know much about the identity of your football team. What have you learned in this period of time leading up to this season? i tell you, man, where, where it's really been cool uh, this past fall, you know, it, the, the, the season was pulled away from us and uh, we wanted to play. We were ready to play. It didn't happen. But what I saw was our team starting to come together. And we started coming together over the fall. Leadership started taking over. Uh, certain guys started stepping forward. And then since we've been back uh, these last few weeks in January, I'm really seeing the growth of our team, not so much on the field. It's more off the field and the leadership aspect of it, the way guys have come together. And it's not just one or two guys. There's a lot of guys that are asserting themselves uh, from that standpoint as far as being – a positive influence on the rest of the ball club. Who are a couple individuals who really stick out in your mind who have stepped up in terms of leadership? Yeah, you know, I think both of our quarterbacks, Cole Kelly and Cephas Johnson, have done a really good job. Our receiving crew as a whole, C.J. Turner and Austin Mitchell and Nick Kovacs and uh, Anthony Spurlock, all of those guys have really stepped forward. Our offensive line, you know, and I'm, and I'm, I'm standing on the offensive side because there's just so many with – Brendan Miles' character and Drew Jones and Jalen Bell. And then you go over to the defensive side. I think Mike Mason's done a fantastic job for Lando Jordan, Matt Wright. Uh, we, we just got – there's just not one or two people. I, I, I'd hate to vote for a captain this year because I don't know if anybody's going to get enough votes. Everybody – the votes will be scattered all over the place because we really had a great response uh, when we when we challenged them as far as being leaders and, and – doing the things that are right, because when your best people are your best players, then you're going to have something special. And that's what's happening right now. You mentioned quarterbacks Cole Kelly and Cephas Johnson stepping up in terms of leadership. In 2019, you played with a dual quarterback system with Cole and Chase and Virgil. Will you kind of try to do something similar this year with those two, or is someone maybe standing out more to you in terms of taking over that lead role? Well, I think both of those guys need to be on the field for us. So we're going to use both of them. We'll do them the same way. We'll take advantage of their strengths and uh, on each one of them. And, uh, and, and they'll become situational guys, just like we did with Cole and Chase. And I think that worked out really well for us. Our offensive staff, Greg Stevens, our offense coordinator, and our offensive staff did a really good job managing that situation. And I don't see us changing going forward. I think it was positive for us. We had great results because of it. And uh, I can see us doing that again. In 2019, your team was a very high-scoring team, led the conference in scoring offense, total offense. Defensively, how have you seen your team progress and grow in the last couple of months? Yeah, Chris Lashney's taken over as our defensive coordinator, and I think what you'll see, we'll be more sound on defense. Uh, we won't be giving up the big play. We gave up too many big plays. There were some explosive plays uh, at critical times during the course of games uh, in, in 2019 that you know just wasn't acceptable. And uh, since Chris has taken over, 
has been an emphasis on stopping those things, being more sound. I think we'll be pressure oriented, but at the same time, I think we'll be sound as far as uh, the ability to stop big plays from taking place. It'll happen, but uh, also I think we're going to have more depth in the secondary, uh, some more guys stepping up. So I think our talent level is going is, to is, yeah, – I know it's increased there. We've gotten a little bit better. Knowing that we're actually going to be playing a season, obviously everything was taken away from us very quickly in the fall. What are your goals that you have for this team this year? It's same as they are every year. It's uh, just get better every day. You know, go out on the field, practice with a purpose, and uh, as we go through this process, the games will take care of themselves. They're going to come every Saturday and we're going to play. And But if we don't prepare right now for those games as as, uh, as they come up, starting with Sam Houston on the 27th, uh, then uh, it's going to be a mute point. So we have to take care of what we can every day in practice uh, and just keep continually getting better and growing and as to who we are, what our identity is going to be and where our strength and weaknesses are and working on those. And then knowing the successes you had in the 2019 season, including making it to the FCS championship for the first time since 2014, I can only imagine the Hammond community is super excited that Lions football is coming back. How excited are you to be able to play for your community? Well, I, I think, you know, our home stadium is just co so cool. You've been here. You've seen the Strawberry Stadium is just a nostalgic place. Uh, we really have a fantastic atmosphere. I know the Nichols game, I think, was the second largest crowd in the history of the school this past year. Villanova, we had it. it was that was electric for the playoff game, and the people loved it. Uh, they miss football here. This is a football community, and they miss football here. The high schools did a great job. We hosted 19 high school contests here in Strawberry Stadium this past fall. Uh, some people came out for that, but uh, the Lions are coming back to town this spring, and you know I, I think the people are as excited as the team is right now.